Mitchell grabs the belt and makes it out of there. Wow. Boy, look at him take off. Certainly he's got a million bucks in his hand. I'm back, and where we last left off, I was getting destroyed by this thing, and I figured it would be pretty boring to show you guys this fight again, so I'm just gonna cut to the end. Uh, spoilers, I win. And it doesn't. So, I wasn't paying terribly close attention to the story, but if I remember correctly, we were searching the world for Theodore Roosevelt's secret treasure, after my base was attacked by Nazi Russian robots who were trying to steal my PDF file of Theodore Roosevelt's secret diary, the one with the magic, and now we were headed off to Puerto Rico so that we could search the capital for clues uh, leading us further down the path to locating Theodore Roosevelt's secret treasure. I think that sounds about right. We all know the story. Theodore Roosevelt was cursed by a gypsy shaman during the Spanish-American War, which, rumor has it, caused him to be haunted by ghosts from the future. The ghosts never really meant much to Teddy, but they bothered his family something fierce. So, after two terms as president, he decided it was time to take a break uh, and look into magic, which is what brought him to his African safari where he wound up discovering whatever it is that makes up the lost treasure of Theodore Roosevelt. Ah, here we are. Puerto Rico International Airport. Where do I go to pick up my bags? Hey! Hey, I just want to know where to go to get my luggage. I don't need... Hey, just leave me alone. I just want to get my luggage. Dick. You know what feels better than flight combat in this game? Anything. I really don't like how when you get hit it just makes you shoot straight down. And I don't like how a lot of the attacks seem to just come from nowhere, like the sky is just exploding or something. Just getting hit a lot in the back, like, oh, look at that. Look at that. I don't know what's hitting me. It just is. The sky is just exploding, and I happen to be there when the sky is exploding. One of the things that I always thought about Iron Man's suit was, so it's made of all these segmented pieces of metal and uh, other materials, materials that are harder than flesh. And he's constantly put into these situations where he takes a lot of punishment, but he never comes into a situation where the armor doesn't just get blown off if the suit's severely damaged, whereas instead maybe one of the segments gets bent inward and actually causes him damage. That just doesn't seem to happen with the Iron Man. Uh, costume, which, you know, fits with comic books. Whenever somebody's costume is damaged, it's always convenient. Um, you know, the cape gets torn first, uh, none of the women ever have their shirts torn, or nobody's pants get blown off by something. If they're in the most horrendous explosion, their pants will survive, even if the rest of their body does not. That's just how it goes. This really happens with a lot of things, um, where people have power armor. The power supply is never damaged, um, even if they have dangerous power supplies, unless it's specific to the story, whenever they get damaged, that power supply is not going to be at risk of blowing up, they're never going to get hit so hard that they actually have wiring problems and suddenly, oh, I can't use my leg. This stuff just doesn't happen. Wait, 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 why, why are our helicopters going through the tunnel? Why aren't we just flying over the mountain? Why didn't we just fly around this whole ring of death? Why are we flying through this canyon to begin with? This is stupid. This is, this is terrible. Helicopters can fly. I can fly. Ah, fine.
Yes. I'm better now. So, it seems we've finally reached the Puerto Rican capital, which can only be reached by passing through a magic portal hidden deep in the airport's basement. The locals seem friendly. Not bad, Stark. Stormbreaker 1 to all points. Shadow Isles forces are disrupted, surrounded, and outgunned. Now, if I were Theodore Roosevelt, where would I hide the clue? Probably somewhere near that big magical barrier in the back of the city. But first, I better talk to the NPCs and see if they have anything that can help me. Oh no! It appears a local shaman has bewitched the townsfolk. There is only one known cure for this sort of shaman's curse. I don't know it, but I assume that hitting them as hard as I can, possibly with missiles, will work just as well. I assume when they stop bleeding, they'll make me some sort of statue or throw some sort of dinner in my honor. But until then, first things first, we must find and destroy the shaman. That's right, dog. Oh, those helicopter shadows look pretty cool. Oh my god, where did that guy just go? I just kicked him and he just flew straight up off the screen. Right out of his chair. <laughs> oh my god, I wish that happened every time I hit somebody in this game. Oh. What's, what's this guy doing over there? Uh oh. Um. I guess I'm not supposed to punch the tanks because that makes me become one with them. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can do that again. I need to take a quick break from talking, so I'll probably be silent for about the next, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds. I'm starting to get a little depressed because I'm realizing that the rest of this game is going to consist of me getting knocked straight down from fighting in the air, or just mashing on the melee button when I'm fighting anything that actually tries to get close to me. It's just... so exciting. I'm so glad I'm playing this. I'm, I'm so glad I'm playing Iron Man 2. This game would have been pretty solid if they were able to take the time to create three separate dedicated combat systems, one for when you're on the ground, one for when you're hovering, and one for when you're flying. That would make the combat seem actually interesting and, and fun and good. Kind of like what we had with um, Spider-Man Web of Shadows. That game was also rushed and had its share of problems, but the combat varied depending on whether you were in the air, on the ground or stuck to a wall, so that made it a bit more varied and interesting. Oh, we can destroy the other buildings, not just the really small ones like the guard towers? 
Okay, I know what I'm going to be doing for a while. This is giving me flashbacks to some of the earlier games with destructible environments. When shooting something for a while made it just disappear rather than, you know, explode and leave debris behind. I really hope some games experiment more with destructible environments in the future. I would like to see some sort of shooter where everything was destructible to the point where you could possibly end the map with it just being one big flat open piece of terrain with a bunch of scorch marks where buildings used to be. Oh man, can you imagine blowing up some building with like six other guys in it with a mortar or something? Oh, now I'm thinking, um, so you guys remember Mag? Mag was kind of crap, but imagine if they made a Mag style game built around World War II, where you could literally have over a hundred people on each team doing like D-Day, where we have some people in planes, we have some people in boats, we have people defending, people attacking, and just all stuff like that where it's not built around those small team objectives like MAG still had, but with those massive teams, where you actually had some warfare style games. That would be really cool. A massive multiplayer World War II game where you could have people in planes, boats, submarines, and on foot interacting with each other in one massive battle. Yeah, I'd like that. Or I could just keep playing, like, Iron Man. <laughs>